Welcome to Daily Devotion with Ken Gurley. Devotions designed to inspire you on your daily walk with God. Here's your host, Ken Gurley. Hey everybody, good Tuesday morning. I don't see Tessie. I don't know where Tessie's at. I do not know. I, I actually have a chair sitting right beside me that if she came up, she could sit beside me, but I don't see her today. Yes, I know. I know. One of these days, it may be in a new millennium somewhere. She will join us up here. Good morning, Sharon, Catherine, Angie, Tyson. Howdy. Good to see you, each and every one of you. I'm just happy to be with you guys each and every Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. If you just stumbled into this, somebody shared it. We get together Monday through Friday, 7 a.m., and just say hello to each other, tag in with each other. Uh, this is a special week. We're declaring Thursday prayer meeting on daily devotion. Bring your needs. We'll have a little directed prayer, and then just take some time out for prayer. And I believe the Lord would be pleased with that. So where we're at, we're reviewing the book called Blessed, 90 Days to Change Your World. Um, just wrapping up a few thoughts in that book. I hope you've enjoyed it. You can get it at KenGurley.com, PentecostalPublishing.com. You can access that. Um, I spoke about America's Intercessor yesterday, and it just got me, I don't know, this morning, I, I, I was just, I don't know, I was just... Um, praying and looking over the book and just asking the Lord what to do. And I don't know, it just, it just took me back. It took me back to the beginning of the modern Pentecostal movement. I pastor in Houston and Houston had a great connection to that early modern Pentecostal movement. And, and I, uh, then that got me curious and I went out on YouTube and I just typed in the words healed in Houston and um, found some of the excerpts of a play uh, that I wrote and that a lot of area churches got together and performed in just a tremendous time. And it tells the story of how the Pentecostal movement began in Houston, then spread from here down Interstate 10 West to Los Angeles, Azusa Street. And we called the play Healed in Houston. We told some of the early stories of how it all began. So many revivals began with a healing. A healing. I could say a healing of a heart, healing of a mind, healing of a bad attitude, but also a physical, demonstrable healing. And would you just let me tell the stories? Now, I don't do this to wander down memory lane. I don't do this to say that the past is better. But David, Thomas, I do this because if the Lord did it back then, he'll do it again. He's no respecter of persons. And I do this to build your faith, to believe God for the impossible and to see things happen. So if you need a healing in your life, so many miracles of revival. I mean, Acts 2, we know that 3,000 were added to the church, but Acts 4, 5,000. Why? One healing. The lame man at the gate, beautiful. It all begins with a healing. A healing. And um, I want to elevate the story of how it all began here. And I'm going to throw out a few names you're not going to recognize and I had to refresh my memory on these. These are not names that I normally walk around thinking about. But let me see if I can describe it. Um, this whole area that we're in right here, um, it was shaped, it has been shaped by storms. The great storm of 1900 swept through this area. Uh, it is still the greatest natural disaster in American history. Probably 10,000 lives lost. Um, it completely upended this area. For example, the Catholic Church here is called the Galveston-Houston Diocese because back 
when Galveston was the prominent city in this area. But with the great storm of 1900 and the utter destruction of that island, everything moved inward into the city of Houston, uh, across Galveston Bay, up the bios, into the city of Houston. Just west of Houston, there's a little town called Orchard. Orchard, and a couple of families from Missouri. Uh, you're, their name was Euler and Ayler. There's still some of the family members out in Orchard, Texas. And they, they planted, what do you think? Orchards, yes, they planted orchards. And those, those two were blown away by the great storm of 1900, sort of like where I, I pastor in Pearland, it was known for its pear trees. Those two were blown away in the great storm of 1900. Well, a man named Walter Euler and his wife, Annie, um, were very discouraged. Walter was convinced in 1903 he was about to die. And so he said, if I'm gonna die, I'm not gonna die in Texas, I wanna go home. So they made their way by rail back to Joplin, Missouri. And when they got off the train, they met Charles Parham. Parham is one of the modern fathers of Pentecost. And um, they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Parham prayed, and Walter Euler was healed. He was a brand new man, overjoyed at the change in his life. Uh, Walter Euler and his wife, Anna, invited Parham to come down to Orchard, Texas to hold a revival in 1905, May, Parham got here. And there was a two-week revival. It just turned the whole area upside down. Parham stayed in the Ehlers home, brother-in-law to Walter Euler. And um, you would just see, you would just see the power of God falling. An entire railway crew on the Atchison, Topeka, Santa Fe Railroad crew was just saved miraculously. and It was the greatest scene. Uh, Parham said when he got into that orchard community, there were only five or six believers. After two weeks, he said there were only that many sinners. Yeah, it was a powerful revival. And remember this, it began with a healing. I, I can't tell you how many great moves of God began with a healing. I, I want to say this, Lawanda Don, I, I don't know. Do you know that maybe the next great revival we see, the na this, this is why I believe holiday gatherings are so important because you could pray the prayer of faith that great things happen in the midst of healings. The revival had started when Walter Euler was healed and in Texas, the healing continues. The sick were brought in wagons from as much as 20 miles away and uh, healing had come. Parham's trip to Orchard uh, concluded the third week of May 1905, and he returned to Baxter Springs, conducted a whirlwind tour of rallies, raising workers to come back down to Houston. And uh, there were several people that came with him, and Howard Goss was one of those. And so July 4, 1905, they got back together in Orchard, and they had a big barbecue and uh, it was just amazing, and uh, the power of the Lord fell. I still have a, I have a photo on my wall of the hundreds being baptized in Orchard, Texas. But then somebody got the idea that we need to go into Houston. We need to get out of the suburbs and farming communities and into the city. Uh, a mule team was sold. And uh, with the proceeds, about 25 workers accompanied Parham into the city of Houston. He would get downtown Houston. He would have a street meeting at the Santa Fe Railroad platform. And uh, then they found an, an old event center, Brian Hall. It's still in downtown Houston today. And they rented the hall and they would get up in the morning, study the Bible, pray. Then they would go out and witness and hold street meetings all day long. Then they would have the evening services in the downtown uh, Bryan Hall. It was so common. But here is how the revival in this city, this fourth largest city of the United States began. 
was a very prominent woman named uh, Mrs. Delaney. Um, she had been on a streetcar. Back then, they had streetcars, electrified streetcars in Houston. One of them had short-circuited, and it had paralyzed her on the left side. Her story was told in the Houston Chronicle, and she was totally paralyzed. The pain grew so great, and her discomfort grew so great that one day she said, Lord, either heal me or take me. <laughs> That's what she prayed. Either heal me or take me. I just lends credence to Ravenhill's statement. God doesn't hear prayer. He hears desperate prayer. Desperate prayer. Either heal me or take me. That night after praying that prayer, Miss Delaney dreamed. She dreamed she was downtown in Houston, outdoors, and she saw a man come up to her, lay hands on her, pray over her, and she was healed. It was days later that her assistant rolled her in her wheelchair down to Old Market Square in Houston, and there Charles Parham was preaching on a park bench. And she said, that is the man I saw in my dream praying for me. So they prayed for her. Nothing seemed to happen. But as they rolled her away from Market Square, block after block, the healing came and the paralysis lifted. And soon she was able to lift her left hand. Soon she could feel strength coming back into her left side and left leg. It was so powerful. The power, that one witness that was broadcast in the major papers of Houston turned them out. G.J. Buck wrote, he said, I saw hundreds of night, thousands all together, listening to Parham's teaching, hearing speaking in tongues, the repeated testimonials of those who had been healed of every vice and disease. I saw a pastor of one of the largest churches in Houston there. Never heard one of them discuss it or allude it in their pulpits. No, they were just too busy sensing that something was happening in the city of Houston. It was so powerful. The meetings, the meetings kept going in Houston. And Parham would go back to Kansas and Missouri periodically and raise money and come back. And they would just, they would see so many things happen. I, um, I wonder... Here's what I've been wondering. I've just been wondering, could it be? Could it be that we are one miracle away from a great breakthrough? Could it be that one miracle is separating us from what we want to see in God? Let me just say a couple of more things about the story. A Bible college was opened in 1906 in downtown Houston. Uh, it's um, the present site of the federal building in Houston on 503 Rust Street. Uh, from that Bible school, Howard Goss emerged. From that Bible school, William Seymour emerged. From that Bible school, the Azusa Street Revival was born. From that Bible school, revival began to spread around the world. I, I feel, and I have felt this morning in prayer, I can't, I can't put my finger on it, but I feel that our next great move of God in families, churches across America will begin with a healing. It's going to start with a healing. I believe the revival you've been praying for in your family is going to start with a healing. The revival you've been praying for at your job, in your neighborhood, is going to start with a healing. And this is where what we talked about yesterday, intercessory prayer. We need to dust off the prayer of faith. And we need to be ready to move into situations that when someone in our family or in our circle, our sphere of influence, do you remember Christine, Shirley, do you remember that it was said of Simon Peter's shadow 
that anyone who the shadow fell on was healed? Don't you know, Tyson, that you have a healing sphere of influence, that you exert shadows wherever you go, healing shadows. I, I am praying that God would take the individuals on daily devotion and would push their shadow because it's sunset. And when the sun is setting, the shadows start getting long. You say, no, it's sunrise, pastor. But morally, spiritually in this world, it's sunset and the shadows are getting very long. I pray that your healing sphere of influence is magnified exponentially. That when you step into a situation, that all eyes will be on you and that you will have the faith and the holy boldness to just step forward and say, let me help you pray about this. Can I pray for you? And you will be used of God to usher in yet another healing, but more importantly on the heels of a healing is a great revival. This is what the spirit of the Lord has been impressing me with today is that the Lord is ready to do great and mighty works in this area, in your life, in your home, in your family. But it's going to take you and me willing to step out and say, God, I want to see. I want to see you heal. You heal. I was... I was looking online at YouTube at this drama that we did at the Toyota Center in Houston. Healed in Houston was a call. There was a song that our staff wrote, He Can Save, He Can Heal. And those are two of the pillars of what's called the whole gospel, the fourfold gospel, that Jesus is Savior, He saves. Jesus is Healer, He heals. Jesus is Sanctifier or Baptizer with Spirit, and then He's Coming King. And so these two things, save and heal, were two of the huge elements of our ministry in early Pentecost. They sang this song, and, um, and as they sang this song, it was a cappella, and the Holy Ghost began to fall in the Houston Toyota Center. That's where the Houston Rockets play basketball. Spirit of the Lord just began to fall. I don't know if any of you were there, but you may remember what I'm I'm saying the Holy Ghost started falling. Uh, we didn't think we were going to be able to go on with the drama. It was so prominent and so powerful. And I was standing, I was directing the drama. I was standing off to the side with my headset on. Was it, you know, I, I was into it, but I, I was also thinking of what was going wrong and what was coming next and what should have been done, could have been done, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, all of a sudden, a gentleman, a gentleman walked up and near me, and I, I could sense his presence. I was down on the floor level, and, and uh, I heard him say, hey, look, look, someone has just been healed over there. Someone's, someone didn't have hearing, and they've been healed. They can now hear. Look at them. Look at the joy. And then that gentleman said something. He said, wait a minute, that's my daughter that's been healed. <laughs> my daughter has not been able to hear, and she can hear. And he went running into the crowd that was gathering. Their healings were falling in that building. Here's what the Spirit of the Lord is just telling me. And maybe, maybe we need to throw, some of you are already doing that, but if you know someone needs to be healed right now, if you know a healing that you're going to be faced with over the holidays, I wish you'd just start putting their names or at least their initials out there. Put it out there because I believe the revival you've been praying for and the breakthrough in your family, the breakthrough in your small group, your local church, your community, your neighborhood, on your job, at your school, I just felt impressed with the Holy Ghost. It's going to start with a healing. The great apostolic revival that started here in Houston went to Azusa Street and launched from there into the whole world. It began with a healing. 
And I think this is what's needed. It's what's needed. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. We did another drama, and let me let me just talk about this kind of healing. This one was called The Fire Still Falls. We actually did this one out in Los Angeles at the Azusa Centennial, the 100th anniversary. And we tell the story of how Pentecost began there with the, it's just so odd, the great storm of 1900 ushered in so many changes to our area. But it was the great San Franciscan earthquake of 1906 that shook California in more ways than one. In fact, as the newspapers were trumpeting the news of the earthquake, that was the first day of the Azusa Street Revival. Healing comes. And with the healing, whether it's societal, whether it's tragedy, whether it's upheaval, personal sickness, something happens in a healing. Here's what the Lord is telling me. Let me just rehearse it and underscore it. That the answer you seek in your family is going to start with a healing. That the answer you seek in your church, your community, it's going to start with a healing. So rather than just spending all your time in the prayer room, and I encourage you to stay in the prayer room, be ready, be sensitive, because something is going to catch your eye. Someone's going to catch your eye. A need is going to catch your eye. And the Holy Ghost is going to prompt you. And in that very moment that you obey the Holy Ghost and you pray the prayer of faith for healing, the revival is all going to begin the unleashing of blessings, the outpouring from heaven. That's what the Holy Ghost told me this morning. You take that, apply it to your own life. If it means something to you and you say, that resonates with me, God is, God is speaking to me, I'm facing a situation and I know what I'm getting ready to go through. I believe it's all gonna begin with a healing. Oh, praise God. If you're on Facebook, follow, like, share, YouTube, subscribe. Just a few moments, we'll be on KYCC.com. Jump over there. You can also check their website, KYCC.com, and download the podcast over there. You guys, woo, I, I hate to say goodbye, but I need to say goodbye, or you'll accuse me of just being one of those old long-winded preachers that the older he gets, the more he talks. There you go. I'm out of here. We love you. Share this with others. Go have a terrific Tuesday. Even though, even though it was a minus Tessie Tuesday, yet another Tuesday slips by without Tessie. <sighs> someday, someday, it'll all start with a healing. That's it. Her heart needs to be healed. That's what I say. May the Lord be with you. Go have a wonderful day. God bless you. Thank you for sharing a daily devotion with Ken Gurley. We pray this ministry has been a source of encouragement and strength to you. Please be mindful that your financial support enables us to meet with you each day. To give a donation or connect with us, visit our website at kengurley.com. There you will also find the latest books, podcasts, and resources. Blessed 90 Days to Change Your World is Pastor Gurley's latest book. You can get your copy of this life-changing book at KenGurley.com. May God's favor rest on you in every way until we meet again.